Ladies and gentlemen, imagine half of Britain's satellites vital for secure communication, Earth observation and science reaching orbit in just one company's rockets. That company? SpaceX. Since 1971, the UK hasn't launched a single satellite from its own soil, relying instead on foreign rockets, now with 50% riding Falcon 9s at just £2,176 per kilogram. However, a new House of Lords report warns this dependence risks politicisation. But is it a crisis or a wake-up call to finally get a rigolon on launching our own rockets, perhaps fund and reclaim British space? After all, here's the last time the UK successfully launched a rocket and reached orbit. Just kidding. This next clip was filmed in 1989, which showed our technological advancements in the space race. Nobody thought this was possible at the time. OK, let's get into it. The UK must urgently distance itself from Elon Musk and SpaceX, warns parliamentary report. The UK's infrastructure has become far too reliant on the far-right billionaire who could politicise our reliance upon his companies. So say the far-left lunatics. No, sorry, that's not what it says. The report warns. This article brought to you by Byline Times, written by David Hink. The UK has become too dependent on Elon Musk and his SpaceX company for the success of its space programme and must urgently seek greater independence from it in order to stop the politicisation of these services by the far-right billionaire, a new parliamentary report has warned. The report by the House of Lords UK Engagement with Space Committee discloses that half of Britain's satellites are now dependent on Musk's company and warns that the UK's capacity now risks being politicised as a result. I'm very interested to hear your view on this. Is the committee right to flag potential single point of failure scenarios with Elon Musk having such control? Or does this dependence stem from SpaceX's unmatched reliable and cost efficiency, which is fueling the ability of Britain's space story? Rather than demonising Musk, perhaps the UK should treat this as a catalyst to diversify, boost domestic launch capability, deepen European partnerships and invest more into space programmes. Sovereignty matters, but so does pragmatism. Britain needs to build its own rockets and keep the door open to proven partners. The goal shouldn't be to cut ties, but to reduce single point vulnerability while staying competitive in the new space race. But good luck with that, trying to compete with SpaceX, with over 500 successful missions and landings of their rockets. Putting it bluntly, there is no cost-competitive way to send your payload to space when SpaceX charges as little as £2,176 per kilogram for a dedicated full-capacity Falcon 9 launch to low-Earth orbit. Far cheaper and more reliable than any competitors. Musk currently spends much of his time on his X platform, which he owns, where he regularly attacks the UK's diversity and race policies and predicts civil war in the UK. Good to see at least the word predict being shared there, rather than the morons who deliberately misinterpret that to mean calling for a civil war. Weirdly, there's a hell of a difference. He is also a financial supporter and backer of the convicted far-right British criminal Tommy Robinson. Right, I best choose my words carefully here. Tommy Robinson has had a troubled past, including football hooliganism and contempt of court convictions. But that label alone overlooks his role in drawing public attention to the horrific child grooming scandals in towns like Rotherham and Telford, where institutional failures let thousands of vulnerable girls down. He also raises legitimate concerns about the pressures of rapid, unmanaged immigration on community safety and public services, issues that have, in many tragic cases, been linked to serious crimes and the murdering of innocent people. While his anti-extremism stance is self-described and often fiercely debated, the core desire to protect children and keep communities safe should surely be something we can all agree on. Without Tommy Robinson or Elon Musk highlighting these serious crimes, it's quite clear that sweeping these matters under the rug would have continued. I took the time to see for myself and hear from many folks who attended the Unite the Kingdom march in London. It absolutely opened my eyes to people's growing concerns and fears. And be warned of anyone who tells you that everyone who attended was racist. That disgusting level of labelling and critique should be dismissed and treated with the contempt it deserves. Card in the corner if you want to see my first-hand experience of the London March. 
However, the UK government has so far resisted calls to distance itself from Musk's companies, with ministers refusing demands to come off his ex-social media platform. I would think so too. It's the only media platform left where you can actually find the truth. This reluctance could prove particularly challenging when it comes to the UK's space infrastructure. The report by Piers warns Musk could use his dominance to crowd out competitors in satellite communications before politicising the UK's reliance upon his companies, saying that this reliance is challenging in the context of increased demand for SpaceX launch services and the potential politicisation of the Starlink service. The report's warning that Musk could crowd out competitors and politicise UK reliance is logically baseless as SpaceX dominance stems from unmatched innovation and cost slashing reusability that enables competition, for example via ride shares for startup, as in sharing a rocket's payload to send your package to orbit. Whilst of course Starlink, which gives satellite internet to people in the UK, the operations there are regulated under Ofcom licensing requiring impartial service, making deliberate politicisation a self-destructive breach that would invite antitrust action and the loss of billions in government contracts. A dumb power move, not something SpaceX would do. The report calls for the UK government to reduce its reliance on SpaceX and use other launch sites abroad and build sites in the UK to launch satellites. One is already under construction in Shetland. The UK last launched its own satellites in 1971. What on earth has the UK space industry been doing for 54 years? Somewhat ironically to this article, relying on foreign rockets already, NASA, ESA, Russia and India, but the UK did excel in satellite design, which is almost a £19 billion industry and supports 120,000 jobs. But it also regulated itself into launch paralysis until 2018, only now building spaceports and rockets to finally launch again. Under the title The Space Economy, Act Now or Lose It, the committee hears from witnesses calling for the doubling of spending on space industries from £640 million to £1.2 billion, calls for the creation of a Minister for Space and for much more coordination in government to create a unified space programme. Great! Doubling space funding to £1.2 billion, adding a dedicated minister and forging a unified programme will slash reliance on foreign launches, turbocharge UK rockets and spaceports, create high-end jobs and secure billions of pounds in economic growth. Of course, it will never catch up to SpaceX's accelerating lead in the industry, but it would create a more competitive landscape and work towards the common goal of more affordable, resilient and diverse access to space for all. The article goes on to cover the implications of Brexit, but skipping through the article a little bit, the UK is still a leader in the sector, with 60 UK universities doing space research and the UK companies specialising in new satellites and reducing debris in space. There is also a growing market in the city for insuring satellites. But the country is suffering from a skills shortage in space development and piecemeal funding given to smaller firms rather than long-term funding for bigger projects. The committee state that far from being the preserve of astronauts and rockets, space technology underpins daily life on Earth, from GPS satellite guiding transport networks and smartphones to banking systems relying on satellite timing to secure global transitions, to weather satellites supporting farmers. Climate scientists and urban planners use space data to track emissions and design sustainable cities. The country also has a big centre based in Harwell for space research, but it cannot expand easily because of the land next to it is contaminated by nuclear waste. Despite this, the peers are optimistic for the future of space technology in the UK. Labour peer Baroness Cathy Ashton said, Only the most strategic and forward-looking nations will capture the economic and scientific rewards of this new space age. With the right leadership, coordination and investment, the UK can be there. Space is transforming the world and our report found much to be positive about. Britain should be playing a role in leading that transformation or risk being left behind. Amen to that. In the end, this report isn't so much a concern about Elon Musk, but a call for Britain to rocket ahead, diversify launches, rekindle European ties like Galileo and Iris to dodge Brexit's black holes and pour £1.2 billion into a unified space powerhouse that creates jobs, curbs skills shortages and unlocks trillions in global growth. Because, as Baroness Ashton wisely puts it, only the bold will claim the new space age. 
What do you think? Should the UK chase full independence from SpaceX or smartly blend it with homegrown rockets and EU alliances to stay ahead? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Will, this is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you, Patreons. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.